Good morning. Here are the announcements for the week following Sunday, January 15th. Our annual meeting will be Sunday, January 29th, right after worship, and we will meet in the fellowship hall. Lunch will be provided. Please plan to attend so we, as we review 2022 and discuss the needs of 2023. We need a quorum of at least 50 people to proceed with the meeting. The annual report was emailed to everyone yesterday. I think it's today it's going to be emailed, Pastor Nate. The annual report will be emailed today, soon. We do have hard copies in the back of the church if you would like to pick them up to look right away. And printed copies are available in, at, by the welcome desk. Our youth are at, once again selling pizzas to fundraise for their backpacking trip to Montana. The order form and payment envelopes are available on the welcome desk. Uh, Year-end giving statements will go out this week. Let Aubrey know if you have any questions. Did you know it takes a minimum of 17 people for each worship service to happen and go smoothly? Please take a look at what positions are available under the, our online sign-up. You can find the link in our, our website, ChristTheKing.org under the serve tab or call the office with dates that work for you. If you would like more information, contact the office at 920-788-6492. Have a great week. Good morning. It's good to see everybody as we're gathered today. We are celebrating the baptism of our Lord, if you haven't seen by some of the slides already. And it, it's good to see many of you who are online as well. We're delighted that you can gather with us today or whichever uh, time is available for you to watch this service. Uh, we are united and gathered together by the Holy Spirit today, and we give thanks for that. Uh, this is what the annual report looks like uh, back on the worship desk. Uh, we were having some uh, technical difficulties with our Wi-Fi and then one of our computers, so you know how that goes, but we will get that out ASAP uh, to you by email, but if you'd like a hard copy, we have some in the back of the church as well. We will remember our baptisms today as we are united through those waters in which we are washed clean and forgiven and are made children of God. Uh, following our service today, we have a special baptism as well. So on this special day, we get to have a baptism, which is great, and another one next week. So we get to celebrate uh, baptism and remember our own uh, in very special ways in these next couple of weeks. There are many other announcements, but we do welcome our guests who are amongst us. We have a number of people who are gathered here today, and we give thanks for each and every one of you. We do have some uh, guest uh, cards that are found underneath the chairs. They're spread out throughout the worship space. If you would like to fill one out, please do so and put that into the offering plate. And then um, we'd like to say thank you for coming to worship with us today. Let's now prepare our hearts and minds for our invocation this morning as we begin our worship. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, and the light of our salvation. Amen. We continue with our thanksgiving for baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning the Spirit came over the water. And by our word you created the world. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. At the river, your son was baptized by John. By the water in your word, you claim at you, us as your children. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. Shine. 
Shower us with your spirit. To you be given honor and praise. It's amazing how pouring water can attract children. Just draws them right in. That's awesome. We'll continue with our gathering song, I'm Going on a Journey. As you're able, let us stand and sing. Together, let us share the prayer of the day. O oh God, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your siblings and empowered all of us with your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message this morning. Let me grab that. All right. Oh, you're ready to go. This is good. Oh, good morning. Come on down. See. All right, I'm already being asked what's in the bag. We'll get there in just a second. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Oh, it is so good to see all of you and welcome this morning. I'm glad that you are here and I hope that you all can see wherever you are. Uh, we do have something very special in the bag today. Would you like to pull it out? It won't bite you. It's okay. Ooh, ooh. Oh, it's double bagged, which really means it's a super surprise, right? Okay, here, I'll hold this, and you can pull out what's in there. Maybe you get one or all of them. I don't know. That's up to you. What is that? It's seashells. And look, there's even some sand still on them. No matter how much I've washed them, there's still some sand that comes off of them. I, that just happens, right? Here, you want to hold on to one? Anybody else want? You want to hold on to one to look at it? We can pass these around too. All right, do you want to hold on to one? Yeah. Oh, someone over here. You want to look at that, Arthur, and take a look, and you can pass it around. So uh, tell me about this here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I need one. Thank you. Whew, I gave them all away. Uh, so it's a seashell. How many of you collect seashells or have picked some up from time to time or seen them out in nature? 
Maybe at the ocean or a lake. Yeah. This one comes from the ocean on the Atlantic from Florida. I was on a trip and I went along the beach and look at, look at this. How many of you know that there was an animal inside of this? Do you know there was an animal that lived inside of this seashell? And um, when it no longer needed it, then it shed its shell, or maybe it died, and then here's what's left of it, right? Oh, it's a good hat, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it pops out. Oh, hermit crabs find new shells when they're done with one because they're growing, right? Yeah. Um, let's see, does your shell look like mine? No, a little different. How about the one over there that's going around? Does that one look the same? Oh, you passed it back. Oh, thank you. Oh, and they're different sizes too, aren't they? Yeah. Does it look like the other one that's going around or other two that are going around? No, they all, they're all different. Do any of us look alike here? We're all a little bit different, aren't we? We're different sizes. We're different shapes. We're different colors. And that's okay. God loves us all, right? Yeah. Uh, what else do we know about shells? Do you know this is a symbol of baptism? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It is a sign of baptism. So a shell like this, right? It lives in the ocean. This animal lives in the ocean, and it is in water all the time. It needs water to live. And you know what? We need water to live. How many of you drink water? How many of you take baths or showers? I hope everybody's hand goes up. <laughs> Right? How many of you have been baptized that you know of? Uh, one. Yeah? Okay, one. Right. Yeah? I think all of you have been baptized. Maybe not, but if not, there's always opportunity to do that. But we share water experience in baptism. We poured the water in. Remember the stories of water. But today we're going to hear about Jesus being baptized. Did Jesus need to be baptized? No? no? Yes. Yes? But no? What's that? John baptized him for some reason. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, do you know what that reason was? Okay, good. I have something to teach then. <laughs> you guys are pretty smart. You usually get it right away. Uh, so Jesus was baptized. Jesus didn't need to be baptized, but he did it as an example for us to set for us that we become children of God. And so Jesus was baptized by John, you are right, but it was, uh, John had said that he would baptize the one who is coming, right? And he didn't want to baptize Jesus, but Jesus says, no, it's good for you to do that. It's good for you to do that. So we're going to hear that story about how Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist. Very good. I'm glad that you knew that. And, and then we're going to hear something really special that happens to Jesus at the end. There's going to be a voice. And the voice is going to be from heaven, and it's going to say, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The baptism of Jesus was very pleasing to God, and it was the thing that was supposed to happen, so it was very righteous. It was the right thing, and we are baptized just like Jesus, and I'm going to share why that's important as well, because we follow Jesus' example, right? Good. Yeah, you like that deep voice, huh? My son. It's kind of like from a movie. Do you know a movie? No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> it's very dramatic, right? I don't know what the voice sounded like, but I just did it different than my voice, right? Because that sounds maybe like it could be God. Mm, or it could be, yeah, that's God. So we give thanks for our baptisms. So this is a symbol of baptism with three drops of water, and that reminds us of baptism. So this is an old, old symbol of baptism, we remember uh, life that we have in Jesus. You want to touch this one? You can have, you can touch that one too. All right, so it's time for us to pray. Uh, can we put the shell down and we take our right hand and wave it up here? We take our left hand and wave it up here and we bring it together and a clap. Dear God, we give thanks for your beloved Jesus. Watch over us and help us to remember our baptism.
we give thanks for Jesus and his love for us through our baptism. In his name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You can head back to your seats. We'll put those right in here. Thanks for all your help, everyone. So good to see you today. And we'll hear our lessons from Scripture today. Perfect. You're a good helper. Psalm 29. We will read it responsively, so please read aloud the bold phrases. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of God's name. The voice of the Lord over the waters. God's voice is powerful. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. It makes Lebanon skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. May the Lord give strength to the people. Here ends the first reading. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill the righteousness. Then he consented, and that when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Word of God, words of life. Be to God. may be seated. Thank you, Sarah. And we hear those words as we shared in the children's message and also in our gospel today. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. God is well pleased with the baptism of Jesus, of what John has just accomplished, if you will, but also the fulfillment of righteousness, of that word, of what was to come And Jesus, uh, we know in the days to come, will set us free, free from sin, free from death, offering forgiveness in our lives, and also the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those are all of the benefits we receive through the gift of baptism. Perhaps maybe we bring our young to be baptized, as we'll see a little bit later today. Or maybe some of you, and you've shared stories with me, um, I, was, I was in fifth grade, or I was in confirmation when I received my baptism, or for whatever reason, we waited to a later point in life to be baptized. Life has many different circumstances that can take us in different directions. That's not a judgment for us, but it is a point of joy when we can witness a baptism and bring someone uh, to this font to receive that. I've shared the story before. My youngest person I've baptized was less than an hour old, and the oldest person I baptized was 89 years old. 
It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter when we do that, but that we are welcome to come and receive that baptism. It is a joyous time, and it is an important time. Today is a celebration of remembering that Jesus was baptized. We remember that baptism, and we remember ours through that. Now, many of you, if you were baptized as an infant or a young one, you maybe don't remember that day. But I hope that the story is shared with you by your parents or godparents or maybe family members or the congregation who was gathered when that baptism happened so that you can share that baptism with others around you as well. We hear this voice that comes from heaven saying, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The voice we believe to be God's voice. God ordaining or God blessing or God saying and sharing with those who are hearing that this is good, very good. But there is something different in the four Gospels, the three synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They're synoptic in that they parallel or they have similar words and stories In the Synoptic Gospels, these words are almost exactly the same. In Mark and Luke, it says, you are my son. So it's as if God is speaking to Jesus directly. But today in Matthew's Gospel, this is my son. As if there are many witnesses as are gathered here in church and online are witnessing this baptism. And God is speaking so that all may hear that Jesus is my son the beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. It was meant for the crowd, for the people, for those who were gathered to hear that. And as Matthew shares the story of Jesus' baptism, he is sharing it with those who are hearing this story that this baptism is also your baptism. It is your baptism too. We follow in the footsteps of Jesus with our own baptisms. We know that in faith that we are to baptize. We are given that command um, in, in uh, Scripture that we are to go and baptize at the end of Matthew's gospel. Those last verses tell us to go and baptize all nations. So as we hear this voice talking about, this is my son, the beloved, Do you hear voices in your life? Do you hear voices speaking to you in your day? I hope that your your faith is that strong and that your prayer life and worship time, that, that you hear God speaking to you, but sometimes there are other voices. There are other voices in the world that tell us that we're we're not good enough. Maybe we're not smart enough. Or maybe I remember as a young person, you're not cool enough. Or maybe you don't look the right way or talk the right way if someone has an accent. You know, when we go somewhere, uh, they say, we have an accent, and I'd, we'd say, no, you have one. <laughs> but there are voices that tell us, right, tell us many messages, and, and generally those messages aren't always very positive. But God's message, and I hope our message as Christians, is one that is affirming and building up and reminding people that you are enough. God has created you. God has knit you in your mother's womb. God has made you who you are. And you are a blessing and a delight to God. Jesus was baptized. We baptize. Jesus is called beloved after the baptism, and we become beloved through our baptisms, just as Jesus. So when we have baptisms, I picture this in my mind. When a child is baptized, you are my beloved with whom I am well pleased. This next image that's on our screen is a book, Baptized We Live. 
It is a book that we give to our new partners when they uh, join us here at Christ the King and become uh, partners with us. It is a very easy read. It's only uh, 40, 28 pages long. It is illustrated really well, better than I could draw, but it's illustrated well. Um, Dan Erlander wrote this, and his uh, Lutheran theology of baptism is spot on. This is a great book for us to read. If you would like one, we have extra copies that we can give you if you have questions about that. But he reminds us that baptized we live. As Lutherans, this is our identity. It is foundational. It is so important for us because we are called beloved in our baptism. What Jesus has done here on earth by living and teaching and sharing everything of who God is, not holding back or withholding anything, but sharing it all and then suffering and dying on the cross and being risen from the dead. Jesus blesses us through this life that Jesus is the example for for us in which to live. And when we fall short, we can confess those sins and we can be forgiven them. It is so important that we teach baptism in confirmation. That is our unit that we have just finished with our seventh graders talking about the sacraments. The sacraments, how we define it in the, in the church here and as being Lutherans, it's a gift of God's grace. It's commanded by Jesus in our scripture that we are to do that. We are to baptize and we are to commune one another. And when we share in that, that's what we are called to do. So a gift of God's grace that is commanded by Christ, and for us, how we define it in the Lutheran church, that there is a physical element that is attached, and that physical element in baptism is going to be water. We remember our baptisms through the water. Anytime we have a water experience, those of you who like to water ski or, or kneeboard or uh, jet ski or whatever it is, fishing, taking a shower, getting some water to hydrate, whatever it may be, we can remember our baptism. And maybe it's a ritual for some of you. Martin Luther in his uh, small catechism reminds us that when we get up in the morning and as our feet hit the floor, we say a prayer giving thanks for the new day that God has given us and we will do the sign of the cross. But maybe it might be till we get to the bathroom and we're a little more awake and we splash water on our face and then we share that sign of the cross to remember our baptism. So as we share baptism with our seventh graders, we not only talk about what it is to do baptism of young people or people at the font, but we also talk about how baptism sticks with us all of our lives. It's just not for when we are young. It's a one-time deal and send you on your way. Your baptism is with you your whole life long. And so at the end of our unit, <clears throat> we have a funeral service. Because the first words that we share in a funeral service is a thanksgiving for baptism. For we know that the baptismal promises are coming true that have been given to us. That we will receive the gift of eternal life. So we have a funeral and we make it a little fun. We make it a little fun. We, we have a funeral for Gritty. Gritty is the mascot for the NHL uh, Philadelphia Flyers. And Gritty uh, died peacefully on the ice rink. And uh, so we have to do a funeral for him. But we remember the baptism in which Gritty received. And we talk about how those promises come true. And how Gritty is remembered for the love and the joy in which uh, Gritty gave to the fans and all of the people who had come to see him. All right, Gritty's not a person. It's okay. You don't have to look so weird at me. <laughs> we have some fun in confirmation because we have, um, you know, our Christmas trees that were up front and in the back. We have this big box that we bring in, so we put a box up here like a casket. And the students go, why are we talking about a funeral today? Nobody has died. I said, that's the reason why we do that. 
Because there'll be a day where we will face death. Someone in our family, a loved one, maybe even our own. There'll be a day that we face that. So we talk about that, that baptism is so important for us that when we come to the point where we give thanks for the life that we have all had or the person we are remembering, we know that they are baptized and life does not end but our physical life for we live eternally with God. Just so happens this year, three days after we had this conversation, one of our seventh graders lost their grandfather unexpectedly. But because we had this lesson, we talked a bit about what this was. This person could understand that grandpa is with God in heaven and able to share that with mom and those around. I'm so proud of our young people. They get it. They hear it. They learn it. They internalize it. It's part of their life. I was so proud when we were arranging the funeral. We were talking about, is the body going to be present or is it cremated where we might have ashes or there might be just a photo? That's the difference between a funeral and a memorial service. A funeral is when the body is present. A memorial service is when ashes or there isn't a body present. And the young person said, we're having a memorial service. But we will remember Grandpa's baptism because that was important to Grandpa. And it's important to each and every one of us for we will live forever and there will be a day in which we will all be reunited once again through our baptisms as we share life with the saints who have gone before us. Baptism is so important for us. I remember talking about this like every week in my last call with my confirmation students and they were getting tired of it and rolling their eyes. But finally one day one of the students' eyes just lit up and said, I think I get it. You're talking so much about baptism because it's, it's important for us and it has deep meaning for us as Lutherans, right? I said, hallelujah, you got it. And it was great from there. Everybody just kind of had a collective sigh and they're like, oh, if we understand baptism, there's a lot we understand about life, about faith, and about who God is in our lives. Jesus was baptized and a voice was speaking. May we hear that voice of God in our lives, directing and guiding and reminding us of our baptism. Just as God said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. You have a, a name, beloved, with whom God is well pleased. Amen. We continue with our sermon song, remembering our baptisms. Christ, when for us you were baptized and remembering our own baptisms. As you are able, let us stand and sing.
When we have a baptism, these words or this question is shared. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? If so, please join us in sharing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. Congregation may be seated as we continue with the morning offering. As you are able, let us stand for the offering prayer. Let us share that prayer together. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all of your works of merciful power. 
and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You are magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. We continue with our prayer song. We will sing, uh, I love you, Lord, one time through. We'll offer our prayers, opening it up for you as a congregation to share your prayers aloud or in the silence of your hearts, and then concluding by singing, I love you, Lord, one more time. Gracious God, as you invite us in to remember our baptism today as we remember Jesus, we pray that you hear our prayers as we pray for those who are in need, for the church, and for the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom you gave to be that one who will lay down his life for all of us. We give thanks that through our baptisms, we are called beloved as well, and that we live our lives as those beloved and blessed children, pleasing you and the word and the way in which you give us to live, that sustains and cares for all of life. We give thanks these days as we continue our journey here on earth, And we pray for your created earth, for the many animals and plants, that we might be stewards and caregivers of your natural resources, appreciating especially those waters that we enjoy and that strengthen your creation. We pray as we live in our baptisms that we might work for justice, that we might work for peace, that we might work for equality as Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. did as we remember his life of peace and nonviolence. Help us to love one another and to see the Christ in the baptism that is in the other, that we might live in such a way that we offer life in a deeper way. Help us to blot out those voices that tell us we are less than or we are not but knowing that it is your voice we listen to and follow through our lives of faith. Gracious God, we give thanks for the saints that you have blessed us with who teach us and pass the faith on. From Sunday school teachers, table guides, and in many other ways, shapes, and forms that we deliver your word to those who are hungering and desiring to know. We pray that you continue to watch over and be with those who are hurting and broken, those who are hospitalized or sick, those who are recuperating and rehabbing. We pray for your presence, for the strength when it seems like there is no place to go. But give us that confidence and that sure uh, assurance to know that you journey with us and nothing is too difficult for you to be with us and care for us. Gracious God, we take a few moments now. You know what's on our hearts and in our minds as we share those prayer petitions aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
Gracious God, hear these prayers that we offer, knowing and trusting that you care for us each and every day. Help us to see how we are beloved. Help us to see our neighbor as beloved and to give our blessing to those as you have shared yours through your son, Jesus Christ. Hear now our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. May we all say amen. Amen. Prepare now for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So before we eat and drink of this holy meal, we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. A few words about Holy Communion today. As we receive Holy Communion, we receive it by intinction. As you receive the host, you may then dip it into the grape juice and uh, receive those elements. If you have a gluten intolerance, we do have gluten-free wafers that are found in the center of the dish. Just let your server know that you would desire that, and uh, you may grab one at that time. If you're not able to come forward but would like communion in your seat, Uh, Please let one of the ushers know or have someone communicate that to one of the servers so that we can bring communion to where you are and share this holy meal with you. Come at the direction of the ushers. I and oh, this table is an open table. It is God's table, not a pastor's table or the Lutheran church's table. It is God's table, and all are welcome today to come forward and be united in that body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite the communion assistants to please come forward. Thank you. 
Receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. May we say amen? Amen. We continue with our sending song, and as you are able, let us stand and sing. As we share the benediction, we reach across the aisle and join the hands of those to our left and right as we share in our oneness found in Christ. Receive now this blessing. God bless you and keep you. Jesus grant you grace and truth. And the Spirit send peace upon your hearts now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, bring God's love to life. Thanks be to God.